Hello there, this is Todd from the Scoundrels Cantina, and welcome to another custom LEGO Star Wars minifigure review. In this video, we'll be reviewing Luke the Other Scoundrels' unofficial LEGO custom Din Djarin the Mandalorian minifigures, which are based on the Mandalorian series. So anyway, let's begin. The first minifigure up is what we like to call the Phase 1 Din Djarin, due to the armor that he's wearing, which isn't Beskar, but what he wore in the first three episodes of Season 1 of the Mandalorian series. Honestly, we much more prefer this version of him as all the different colors on him make him look quite unique as opposed to simply having generic plain silver armor. The helmet here is entirely a custom mold in comparison to the official LEGO version of the helmet and we think it looks great. The details and amount of prints on this minifigure are incredible, especially because of the custom parts. Anyway, this is what it looks like without the armor and belt pieces on the front, his legs being very detailed, although the torso not so much because the minifigure relies on the armor pieces to make it work. His arm prints are the same on both sides as you can see, and the back prints are pretty similar to the front ones. Simple but effective. Anyway, now let's get this guy back together with the belt and armor pieces. Now what me and Luke like about his armor the most are the dents on the front and the fact that his shoulder pads are different from each other, the beige and blue making it look quite unique. On the Mandalorian's back, we have a custom cape with a hole in the middle of it, which is there if someone wants to add a jetpack on him while at the same time having the cape on. Regarding Din Djarin's face, it's pretty simple, though not too important anyway, because the helmet is what matters. Lastly, he comes with a custom Amban face pulse blaster rifle, which looks absolutely amazing and extremely detailed, especially since it's a single mold piece. This Mandalorian minifigure comes along with a few add-ons like a few antennas for his helmet as you can see as well as a brown jetpack in order to suit his phase 1 look, as we like to call it. The add-ons aren't really accurate but are there so you can have more choices if you want but by our opinion he looks the best without them. Now we have the other Din Djarin minifigure which we like to call the phase 2 version because of the full body Beskar armor. By our opinion, it just makes him look very generic and not unique in any way compared to other Mandalorians who have loads of details, different colors, and even art on their armor. Phase 2 Din Djarin has the exact same custom pieces as the Phase 1 version, although the only differences are the colors on them. As you can see, his Phase 2 helmet is a bit lighter than the Phase 1 for reasons unknown, but honestly, the darker version looks much better despite it being the same helmet. He also has the exact same face as on the first minifigure. Now taking off the armor and belt pieces, we have the exact same concept of prints on the torso, arms, and back, although the only difference is in comparison to the other version are the color variations, as it's a bit darker in order to make a nice contrast with the light silver armor and pretty accurate to the series when he got his upgrade. The leg prints are slightly different from the first version, but all in all it's almost the same thing, just that they are now darker brown with silver armor prints. Now when his belt and armor is back on him, we have a different colored cape which is now dark brown just like the torso and legs and also has a hole in the back for a jetpack. Now depending on which version of the Mandalorian you like the most, you can have his Phase 2 Beskar armor with or without the jetpack as seen from Season 1 Episode 3 to Episode 8, he didn't have a jetpack but then afterwards he did when the armorer gave it to him. We think that him being a Mandalorian and not having a jetpack made him in a way unique despite his plain generic Beskar armor but all in all we don't really care as we simply love his Phase 1 version the most. The Phase 2 Din Djarin comes with his custom molded IB-94 blaster pistol instead of the Amban Phase Pulse blaster rifle which is accurate as he doesn't use it that much anymore since he got his Mandalorian iron armor. Now for the sake of making this review a bit more interesting, here's Din Djarin with a custom LEGO Darksaber which we gotta admit looks pretty darn cool. We also have a variant when he's wielding the Beskar Spear which also looks nice, although the Darksaber is simply much better in every way. All in all, both of these minifigures are a very nice addition to Luke's LEGO collection and we think that they are very unique compared to most, especially compared to official LEGO versions. Now regarding our personal headcanon, we don't consider the Mandalorian series as canon for ourselves because we like to believe that Return of the Jedi and 4ABY should be the happy ending of the Star Wars story, while the Mandalorian series starts 5 years after at 9ABY. Now just remember, this is simply our preference and the way we manage to enjoy Star Wars for ourselves along with mixing most of the expanded universe and some parts of official canon together before the events of Episode 6. The only things we consider as canon for ourselves from the Mandalorian series are certain backstories of ships, planets, characters, and other aspects that are based before the Return of the Jedi. Anyway guys, this is it on the minifigure review and I hope you all enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to check out our other videos and subscribe. 
The link for our minifigure build playlist will be down below, as well as links to our mock and set review playlist. Also, we hope you enjoy the minifigure slideshow now at the end. Anyway, remember guys, God is awesome, may the force be with you always, and we'll see you in another video. You rebel scum.